Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone whenever you happen to be listening to this. Um, welcome to the Coffee with Coaches podcast. Uh, my name is Kevin Stafford. I'm your host today. And with me, I have Dr. Faye Mandel. Uh, Faye has a PhD in counseling psychology and has developed a new fascinating paradigm model that she teaches people uh, to come in the, into the present moment using time and space. And we're going to get into that in detail in a second. She works in both the corporate world as well as with individuals and with families. Dr. Mandel, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for being here. Let's start real quick at the beginning. What brought you into coaching, into counseling? What was what prompted you to start a business, a practice like this? Well, I, I always wanted to be helpful to people. And I went to college to be a teacher. And I took my first psychology course and I said, that's it. So I decided to be a psychologist and everybody said, you'll never finish your PhD. You know, it's I said, oh, yes, I will. And I did. And I practiced for a long time, well, well, for a number of years, I lived in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And in Cambridge, Massachusetts, there's an unwritten law. It's informal, but it says you have to be going to school no matter how many letters you have after your name. <laughs> then you always say, hello, hello, what are you studying? So, so I went to the Cambridge Adult Education and I picked the book up and it was like 4,000 courses. I said, I'm not going to go through all these courses. I'll just put my finger down. At that time, little did I know that random was the order of the universe. And so I put my finger down. I thought I would take meditation or photography or basket weaving or something. And my finger lands on a course called Quantum Physics in the Face of God. And I have never taken a physics course in all my schooling from elementary school to PhD. So I didn't know what quantum physics was, never mind physics. And I'm not a particularly religious person. So I could not imagine why somebody, why the universe would bring my finger to that particular course but it was given by a phenomenal physicist by the name of fred allen wolf and it changed my life and it changed everybody's life that i come into interaction with from that point on so i hope it will change yours and all of your listeners <laughs> so the course what changed for me in the course was that fred allen wolf explained the equation e equals mc squared and he said that energy equals mass times the speed of light squared so that if we can go 286,000 miles per second squared, this table would be white light. And I said, that's ridiculous. This is a solid pay table. It's here, it's, I can bang it, we can do all this stuff. How <laughs> it piqued my curiosity as to what is an illusion versus what is real. And I've been studying quantum physics for the last 40 years and developed a model that teaches people how to come to the present moment so that they don't listen to the content of the stories in their head, which is what most psychologists do and what I was trained to do, but I listen to where the story takes you in time and space. And then I know, then the, the, after you know where you are in time and space, you know what feeling you didn't pay attention to. And then, so you pay attention, you take your attention off the story, off the content to the place in time and space, and then to the feeling. The feeling jumpstarts the superior intelligence of the body and recalibrates you right back to presence. So your body is a superior intelligence and it knows how to heal a cut. It knows how to heal your, your immune system. It also knows how to recalibrate you back to presence. But there's a simple physics principle that says all body in motion stays in motion and all bodies at rest stay at rest until a force is exerted on it. And that force is our attention. That our attention is truthfully our force in life. It's what the one thing nature gave us, which didn't give it didn't give any other sentient being, or maybe it did, but I, I haven't had a conversation with another sentient being to talk about this. So, but I know that it does, it, it works for us, which is that we can choose where to put our attention. So we can take our attention off the stories. We can put it on the time, space, location, know what feeling you didn't pay attention to, which created those stories in the first place. And once you pay attention, it jumpstarts starts the superior intelligence of the body. And just like the body knows how to heal a cut, it knows how to recalibrate you back to the present moment. So feelings are not these things that the culture has told us. They're not impulsive, histrionic, or premenstrual. If you're a woman, they are information that allows you to know that you're not in homeostasis. And, and it tells you what actions your body has to do, which it knows to do because it's on your DNA. It tells you what those actions are that you have to do to get back to homeostasis where you are self-powered, where your mind is quiet and you're listening to the information from your body. I love this. It's traditionally, and I, I say traditionally, typical societal constructs have science and spirituality, for lack of better words in the moment, down their very separate, maybe parallel, but separate paths. And this is clearly 
a melding, a blending together of things that were one in the first place. Exactly. We are an integration of science and spirituality, and it's coming closer and closer and closer and closer. But some of the books that I read are called Quantum Mind, Quantum Buddhism, Quantum Self, Quantum. It's all about the fact that physics is a metaphor for metaphysics. And, and it really teaches us that our body is extraordinary. There's a book uh, called The Inner Reaches of Outer Space by Joseph Campbell, in which he postulates that we are as vast from the skin inward as the universe is from the skin outward. But we don't pay any attention here because when we're thinking, we move in linear time. So we are never present. So when you're thinking, you can't be present. And when you're present, you can't be thinking unless you choose. And then you deliberately go out of the present moment to uh, do feel thought experiments like Einstein or I do, or, you know, musings about how to solve the world's problems, that those are deliberate thoughts. But most of our thoughts have been usurped by feelings because nobody pays attention to the feeling, which then jump starts it, and then it can do what it wants to do and gets dissipated. So it had to find a way out. So it creates a thought, puts itself on a thought like a horseback rider on a horse, and gets discharged that way. The problem is, is that the thought, most people think that the thought is a thought. It doesn't, it doesn't allow you to experience the thought as a, uh, with two components, a feeling component and a thought component. And once you recognize where you are in time and space, you can go back to the feeling that you didn't pay attention to, jumpstart the superior intelligence of the body and voila, doesn't cost any money. <laughs> it doesn't take any time, but it brings you to emotional well-being because in the present moment, you are grateful and you are motivated by the six drivers, seven drivers, I just added one a couple of years ago. So the seven drivers are service, Compassion, integrity, accountability, courage, gratitude, and kindness. Mm. So when you're in the present moment, those are what drive you. Know, those are any one of those or any combination of those. That's what drives human behavior when when humans are being natural and real. I have so many potential follow-up questions, but I, <laughs> I want to talk for three hours and have a marathon podcast. But I think that my most important question is what is what does the application of this of this new paradigm, this model, look like for your clients, for the people that you are in a, in, a, in a counseling, coaching relationship with? What does it look like for them? What's the process like? So what happens is we teach the model in the coaching sessions, and then we apply it. So for just for example, I have this client who had a very uh, terrible relationship with her mama. She would, her mama would say something, she'd go into reaction, and she would dissipate all of her energy into this reaction, in which it had no effect on the mama anyway, because the mama is just who the mama is. She's not going to change. So I was able to reframe for her in the present moment that there's an alternative way, which is just not to listen to the content of what the mom is saying. But when she's finished speaking, just tell her how much you love her and how grateful you are for her giving you your life and for carrying you for nine months. And, and the whole entire relationship changed so that the grandmother at Rosh Hashanah this year uh, which is the Jewish holiday, said, what happened to Maisel? She's so amazing. And she said, well, she's working with this coach. And she said, I I'm going to give her four more sessions. <laughs> so, I, so, so it's noticeable for other people around you who recognize that you can choose where to put your attention. That is the key capacity that we don't even know we have that capacity, never mind how to use it. And so once we get a hold of that, once we can actually be, be very deliberate about where we can put our attention, we can put our attention on listening to the information from your body because it comes in the present moment. So you're never going to hear it if you're in the future worrying or if you're in the past regretting or focus on other people and things and judging and comparing or doing negative self-talk. Those are all the consequences of a feeling plus a thought. And we call those negative emotions. So most people didn't, don't differentiate a feeling from a feeling thought. So they say, Oh, you are, I'm anxious while I'm worried. Well, they're two entirely different things. Anxiety is information from the body that says, pay attention to me so I can recalibrate you to the present moment. If you don't pay attention, it creates a thought, go, it takes you into the future and is, is experienced as worry, which is the feeling thought of anxiety. Mm, excellent distinction. And I, I feel like that the lack of a distinction there is something that has trapped us for so long. It's because we, oh. we view that Sort of some, I mean, no, we don't necessarily think of it this way, but it's like a black box, you know, like where it's just, it's completely impenetrable to our perceptions, but that's just not true. We just lack the, lack the constructs, lack the paradigm to kind of unpack it and really let the light get in, you know? 
Well, it was the first time that I realized when I realized that time and space were an absolute and they were relative, they could expand them and collapse them and curve them and do all sorts of wonderful things in time and space. And I began to see, well, what, el what else is an illusion? And that's when I started to um, experience things like worry as a combination of a feeling and a thought, things like anger and judgments and comparisons and negations as a, a combination of a feeling and a thought and regret and shame and guilt as a feeling thought. Those are all easily extinguished when you can recognize that it's a combination of two things. It's not just one thing, it's not the thought where you put your attention, it's the feeling thought. So once you shift the attention to where you are in time and space to know what feeling you haven't dealt with and you put your attention on the feeling and the feeling you jump starts the superior intelligence of the body, then it's a whole different world. Because the information you get from present moment experience is very different from the information you get from thought. Thinking gives you data or information, but experience gives you information or pattern. So when you see pattern, all of the data bits are integrated. So it's clearer, you're more able to focus, you're more able to see the relationship of one thing to the other thing. And so you have a whole different experience of an event when you are in the present moment. And that's why everybody is hot to trot now to be in the present moment, but nobody has any idea how to get there. Yeah, everyone, everyone knows it's a good idea. But that's yeah. as far as they, that's as far as many people get. <laughs> no, there is, there are no one, even, you know, Eckhart Tolle, who wrote The Power of Now, and he endorsed my book, he, and they, people love him, and they think he's a wonderful, yes, but he doesn't give a methodology. And so what's very interesting is I haven't found, there must be people out there, but I haven't found them in all the years that I've been working with this. Other, another methodology, how to get to the present moment. So my coaching is just about that. How to get to the place where the pathology doesn't exist. So we're not gonna to try to get rid of the pathology. We're just gonna to go to a different place in time and space where the pathology doesn't exist. I love it. It's, again, my, my mind is spinning with so many other deeper questions. I, I wanna give you a chance, you mentioned your book. Talk about your book. Is it is it out now? Is it on its way out? Is it available? Website? Know, Tell me about it. <laughs> two books. One is uh, called The GPS to Self-Powerment. You can buy it on Amazon um, and you can read it. A lot of people find you see, it's, it was very hard to write a book because we're working with symbols that are an expression of thought, which mm -hmm. is language. So language is the problem. And so you're using language to try and communicate something that is the problem. <laughs> so it was very difficult, but my editor and my publisher, who was Connie Kello, who also published Eckhart's books, she and I worked tirelessly to make it as clear as possible using symbols, which are... You know, of course, direct experience doesn't have any symbols. You are. It's a Buddhist concept and it's called non-duality, but you are your experience. You are not you observing your experience, but the experience is the manifest of you. And in the Buddhist language, they call that non-duality. And... Mm -hmm. It's funny. I was actually just watching some a video yesterday for, for, a, for a client of ours, completely un unrelated where he spoke on non-dualism in the context of his particular uh, neurofeedback system. It was just, it's just very, I was going to say funny. It's not very funny at all. It's actually very, very appropriate and very apt and very common to, for those, those little serendipitous connections. Yes, I absolutely. put serendipitous in quotes because these things seem to happen so often. I think it's something a little bit more than serendipity involved, but you know. We always say that, you know, that random is the order of the universe and the order of the universe comes from the quantum field. So we don't have the capacity with our little minds to be able to understand, to experience how the quantum field makes connections and does its work and, and creates this reality for us. And so, but they are all non-coincidental. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming to agree more and more every day as I, as I get, as I get slightly older and get slightly a, a little farther on in my, in my life's journey. This has been great. Is there anything else besides like, where can people find you online? Is there anything else you want to promote or talk about before we wrap up here? My, my company is called In the Present Inc. I have a website called being-present.com. It has a five day course you can take. The video is as a little, is, is not working at present because what YouTube did was from when something from 2017 back, they, they had to solicit a private, you know, you have to talk to them and I'm still working on getting wow. that 
reconnected. But the rest of the 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 um, website is wonderful. There's an introductory video. There's a five day course. There's a lot of um, information about who I am and how I arrived at this place and how to get in touch with me. So, and the book is on Amazon. The other book is called The Children's Book for Parents. And it's a book which has 18 vignettes. And the first paragraph talks about a typical conflict situation between a parent and a child. The second paragraph talks about what's going on in the mind of the child. And the third paragraph is a replay of the parents who go into the world of the child, not demand that the child go into the world of the parents. I'm, I'm going to look into that, actually. That sounds fascinating. I did, I, did, I did not notice that in my in my admittedly light research that I did, which was basically just look at your website, look at your LinkedIn profile. <laughs> That's just fine. I mean, there's a lot of information there as is, you know. Oh, yeah. But I would love to talk to anybody who's interested in this topic and who's interested in learning from me and I'm interested in learning from them. And I just believe it's a wonderful experience to network with people who are aware and who are conscious and who are deliberate and how they participate in their lives. There are so few of us around. <laughs> <laughs> but more every day. More every day. More every day. And hopefully after this podcast, there will be a lot more. <laughs> well, Dr. Mandel, thank you so much for spending some time with us, with me, but with us. <laughs> I'll speak for everyone today. And thank you all to uh, the audience for listening, for tuning in. And we'll talk to you all soon. Okay. Thank you very much.